How the heck are you doing this fine day? I had a conversation the other day with some parents of kids that are just, these kids are just reaching the age of engaging in social networking. And the parents are in a great deal of fear and concern for good reason. They recognize that social networks have become increasingly a, a place that their kids are at risk of bullying and hate and, and lots of negative interactions. As well, of course, there's lots of positive things that go on, but they're really concerned about the negative interaction. And some of them are of the opinion that they uh, should just cut their kids off from the social networks and have them use other, uh, other means of communicating with their friends. Now, I respect whatever decision those parents are gonna make, but I wanna have a frank discussion about the nature of social networking as a communication medium and our attitude towards it, especially the attitude of older generations. Now, let me set the context for you. I, how, how many years, 10, 15 years ago, I was speaking at a conference, uh, an education conference as a, in Edmonton, Alberta. And I was talking, we were actually, I was talking about new forms of communication, com of communication, I've said that well. I was talking about new forms of communication and I was talking about massive growth at that point of different chat tools, online chat tools like Microsoft um, Messenger, I believe they called it, and Yahoo Messenger. And these were, this is long before the mobility explosion when we had, uh, when we were often dialing up through dial up internet, uh, but kids were connecting and adults were connecting with instant messenger apps that would allow us to instantly communicate by computer. Now by today's standards, that's a very pedestrian method of communication. Nevertheless, it was growing in popularity and a lot of parents were concerned. And this, uh, there was a vice principal in the second row uh, as I was talking about this technology and how it could be used in education and how it was fitting in our lives, et cetera. And he uh, stood up and basically told everybody, let everybody know he wanted his opinion heard loud and clear, and it was, uh, that he did not let his two daughters who were aged, he told us, 14 and 16, he did not let them chat online. And I asked him, why not? And he said, because he wanted them to have real relationships, not these fake online relationships that he considered. Now, he only used the term real relationships. My editorializing is calling them fake online relationships. But it was very well accepted in the room. People were very supportive of that idea. They thought that this idea that that it was it was good for us to set standards for our kids to visit face to face or talk on the phone and not use these newfangled tools as a communication tool. And I can remember thinking, what a buffoon! Uh, but I didn't know exactly what uh, I didn't have context. I just in, intuited that that was the hundred percent. I won't say it's the wrong attitude, but it was 100% uh, or 180 degrees different in direction than my attitude towards that technology. Uh, and it wasn't until years later that I really, it kind of entrenched in me why I think that's so wrong. And allow me to share this little story with you. Um, I'll bring it full into full context in a moment. Um, my favorite uncle, uh, was a paratrooper in the second world war. He was in the Canadian first airborne and he fell in love with my aunt while he was a serviceman overseas, but she was still here in Canada on Vancouver Island and they fell in love as pen pals. They wrote back and forth letters back and forth. Uh, and they fell in love, uh, as I say, over the course of four years, uh, while he was in service in, in, over in, in, in the European theater. And I got to tell you, my uncle was a very great guy. I love my uncle and I love my aunt, but my uncle was, I don't think he graduated high school. He was a butcher and a fisherman and a hunter. He wasn't what you would call a man of words. I don't think his letters to my aunt were poetry. Nevertheless, it was the communication tool that they had available to them at the time. And I wonder if we were to ask this vice principal, what part of their courtship was, in his words, real. They never met face to face. They never talked on the phone. They weren't in the same room as they formed a pair bond that lasted over 60 years till my aunt passed away. They fell in love and through these letters. Um, and, and, and they had all sorts of things going against them. They, these letters were all read by somebody else. They knew that every co correspondence between the two of them was being read by the official government censors because they had to ferret out spies and stuff. And they had parts of their letters razor bladed out if there could be sensitive information in it. Um, they arrived out of order and infrequently. Um, so yet despite this, they fell in love. Why? Why did they fall in love? Because of one thing. Human beings, I believe, are born 
we only have one common thing. We do cradle to grave. And it's what we're born for. And that's communication. From the moment we're born, we start communicating with the tools we have. And at that point there, when we're born, it's crying and smiling uh, or cooing. That's it. We just, we just have those primitive, primitive methods of communication to let our parents know how, how we're feeling. And then over our life, we evolve massive communication skills. And we learn to use everything around us to communicate. Just think about it. We use words, we use music, we use touch, we use posture, we use, we use uh, smell, we use uh, facial expressions. We use everything we can to communicate. Uh, and it's, it, when we leave this life, we're still communicating. It's the only thing we do. It's the only thread, common thread through our lives. And it seems to me we live to communicate. So naturally, when new communication technologies come along, we are going to embrace them. Now, you might not think that texting or Snapchat or Facebook Messenger or any of these tools are as profound a tool as the written word, but I would disagree to a certain extent. They are the way that we communicate. They are new avenues and new methods of communication. And the fact that we are now exploring them doesn't diminish their value. The fact that they aren't used necessarily in a generous or creative way often doesn't dis diminish the value that they represent. And for any generation to say that their form of communication is superior to the communication forms preferred by another generation, that is generational arrogance. And I think we have to overcome that. I'm not saying that every generation has to embrace and start using Snapchat and you all have, and I have to become Snapchat masters. I'm not saying that in any uh, way, shape or form. Instead, what I'm saying is we have to respect that these communication tools are every bit as vital as any other communication tool that came before them. And it, they have to mature to the point that we start to use them in a, the proper fashion. We've got to learn to use these new tools effectively. Now, the fact that so many people use these tools to be bullies or to be offensive or to hide behind the perceived anonymity of the internet, I think that is a temporary issue. I don't think that we dismiss the tool because some tools are using the tool now uh, to be a little bit crude. But, but the bottom line is that I think all the generations have to respect the tools that are available. And by respecting it, I mean that we can't diminish their value. We can't look at them and think that somebody that's communicating using that tools is somehow doing a less profound form of communication than the communication tools that we use. Now, I know right away, I know some of you are going, oh, back up the bus, Dotto. I looked at my Facebook feed this morning and all I saw there was uh, some political commentary and people showing me pictures of their breakfast. Exactly how, rel how, how profound is pictures of people's breakfast. Stop and think about it for a second. Yes, there's pictures of people's breakfast on Facebook, but you walked into the office this week and said, boy, it's raining cats and dogs out there, as if everybody in the office didn't know that it's raining cats and dogs out there. When you go to a conference, especially in that social small talk area, when people uh, think about the conversations that you typically have, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. How's the wife and kids? They're doing great. Boy, sure has been a long winter. Really, it has. I can't wait for the snow to leave. I mean, those, these are the comments that people make. And they haven't seen each other and they like each other for years. We do plenty of stuff that's not profound. Plenty of communications are not profound. But I believe that all of these tools have the potential of conveying profound communications, important communications, as well as, the, uh, as well as the less important communications. And it's up to us to learn, maybe not to master these tools, but to respect these tools. And as far as dealing with the bullying, the hate, the abusive nature uh, that happens on these platforms, I think the only way to deal with that is to engage, to not retreat to be there and to be role modeling how these tools can be used so that eventually uh, we have enough of our society that is thinking in the right direction, uh, taking up enough space in these networks that they, that we start trending towards the more positive. Now that might well be 
faint hope. I will admit that I might be a little pieing in the skying there, but it is my hope. I, for one, am not willing to cede the moral high ground in these networks. I am going to continue to engage and, uh, and have my voice heard, and I hope you will as well. And the good news is uh, that it's not going to slow down anytime soon. The tools that we're worried about today are going to seem old hat in five years, and we're going to be struggling trying to figure out how to communicate with a whole new set of tools. That's good news, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that you found today's video to be interesting. I'm really looking forward to hearing your comments on this topic. Do you think I'm on base? Do you think I am right about all of these communication tools that we should be actively engaging more and respecting them? Even if we're not engaging more, do you think that they are deserving of our respect? Love to see what you have to say about that. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. <laughs>